friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. I have something entirely different for you this morning. This is a blast from the past, as so they say. <laughs> I'm going to give you the background story here, and if you don't want to listen to that, well, you can skip to the real work in this video. Now, I will tell you, this has nothing to do with instruments. It's got everything to do with PCs or computers. The background story is I was in the headquarters of Southwestern Bell Designing Systems and um, I think I was very well thought of, worked with, actually I worked with my buddy Ron who makes the saddles for me now and Ron was actually over the programmers. I was on the user side of the house, I was the interface between the programmers and the users if you will and my job was to design the systems and then hand it off and write the manuals and everything and then I would hand it off to Ron and his people would code what I wrote. That's the simplified version. <laughs> but then the headquarters got moved to San Antonio and I don't remember how many people, I'm going to say roughly 450 people. Here was the ultimatum. You move to San Antonio or you're fired. It just so happened that I was pretty well thought of at the division. The powers that be, when I went into his office and said, look, I've been down there house hunting, I've looked around, and I said, I'm telling you, you know, it's a nice place, it's, it's wonderful, it'd be a great place to live, but it's not for me. And he goes, what, what do you mean? He go, I, I said, well, I'm not moving down there. Sorry. And I said, my whole family lives up in the Missouri area, and all I would be doing is spending my time traveling, and they would be spending their time traveling, and I'm just, it's just not my life. Sorry. I'm going to have to quit, I guess, because I'm not moving to San Antonio. Well, unbeknownst to me, the powers that be, and as far as I know, I was the only person that they made an exception for. <laughs> And they actually found me a quote-unquote flunky job fixing break-fix PCs. So I went from system design to working on PCs, the hardware, and, I, and they moved me to Yellow Pages. But at least I kept my job, you know, at least I kept my salary the whole bit. And so I was now hands-on fixing PCs. And I did that for several years, about three or four years. To make a long story short, I got pretty darn good at fixing PCs. It kind of sounded like a flunky job in a way because I went from being in the headquarters and designing systems and kind of over the whole thing there to, you know, fixing a PC. And you would think that would be quite a demotion. Well, in a way it was, but in a way it was my favorite job I ever had in my whole life. In fact, it was the only job I ever had while I worked at Bell 27 and a half years. It was the only job I held there that I actually truly loved. I enjoyed it. Every minute of it, every single day. Didn't mind going to work. It was great. You know, it was a big operation. We had to fix and keep support a lot of computers. I mean, a lot of them. Back in those days, they didn't even work as well as they do today. I mean, they just always had problems, you know. And uh, the dispatchers would, t would say to me, what are you doing to these people? I said, what do you mean? He goes, they all ask for you. <laughs> I said, I don't know, I just fix their stuff, you know? He goes, everybody that calls says, send Jerry up, he knows how to fix this. <laughs> well, the truth is, if I have one strength in my life, and, and I mean, I'm, I'm not bragging again, it's, I feel like I'm just stating an obvious fact, and I hope you've seen it in my videos, it's the obvious fact that I can look at a situation, almost any mechanical situation you can throw at me, and I can figure out what the problem is. And the real problem, not the one that is just symptomatic. You know what I mean? That's what a lot of people, they see the symptoms and they instantly go, that's the problem. Not necessarily. You know, there's a lot of symptoms that create that are created by an underlying problem somewhere else. And I think that's my strength in my life, is that I can look at anything, a tractor or, you know, a, a guitar or almost anything and go, oh, I see what the real cause of the problem is. It's not, you know, it's not just that the action's high and the bridge is pulling up. The real problem is that the, you know, the brace underneath is loose or, or it's weak or whatever. That's the way I was with computers, and I could look at their problem they were having. Maybe it would crash every time they did X, Y, Z. 
Well, I and and maybe the standard fix was to um, put take out the network part card and put in another network card, you know. And, you know, that's what everybody thought the standard fix was. Well, I could go to there and look at it and go, no, it's really a software issue. It's not a hardware issue. And I'd fix the software and bingo, it'd be working and everything would be great. In fact, I would follow the other PC techs around because I knew what they were doing a lot of times. I know, and, and everybody would come to me, you know, and ask me for, you know, to help them, etc. So I got pretty good at it. And anyway, I would follow the other techs around and look in the trash cans and, and get their network cards out. I'd get the uh, video cards out. I'd get, you know, all these things. They would throw them in the trash thinking they're bad. Well, I would just take them out, put them on the shelf, uh, on my shelf. I kept my own little private stash. And whenever I had a problem, I didn't have to wait for stuff to be ordered in or anything. I'd just take it off the shelf and go fix it. Because 99.99% of the time, it wasn't hardware anyway. It was usually software and the hardware was fine, they just couldn't figure out how to fix the software. Bottom line is, um, that's where we're headed today. I've got an issue, now this one, believe it or not, after having said that, this one is more or less hardware related, but it's related to the size of the PC. You know, I've got an i5 PC, I've only got 16 gig of memory in it, but it doesn't seem to be a problem with maxing out on memory. It, it just seems to be, always sluggish and always um, it's behind. And I kind of think that might even be causing some of my trouble with the shop talk. Because even just on doing regular video and recording regular video, sometimes the words are behind or ahead of the video. I guess it's actually ahead of the video. You know, and I've got a good video card in there, a lot of memory on that. You know, all the stuff has been looked at. So I looked at the motherboard and I decided that I could upgrade the CPU in this to an i7. And I did a lot of research on that. And supposedly this CPU change will improve the PC. I don't expect miracles. If it fixes it, great. If not, this didn't cost that much. It was less than $200. I figure it'll work at least as good and hopefully quite a bit better. So that's what this video is about. We're going to take this PC apart and put in a new CPU. So here we go. Okay, well the very first thing I want to say is that I'm going to get criticized because I'm not grounding myself. And here's what I say to that. I have experience with this. More than, I would say, 90% of the people that will be criticizing me. And that is that I took hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of PCs apart over about a three or four year period of time. And never once did I bother grounding anything. And never once did I have a single problem ever. Not one single time. Now, having said that, I would not put acrylic rods in your hands and go sliding your feet across the carpet and then work on a CPU. I don't think that'd be a good idea. My fear theory is if you don't go looking for trouble, you probably won't find it. Here we go. Now, I don't know how to take this apart. My experience is 25 years old. I openly admit that I'm no expert these days. So I don't really know how to take this apart. I'm just going to be fidgeting and figuring it out because they've changed everything. But basically, it works the same as it always works. I can see little twisty deals here. Didn't even know those existed, to be perfectly truthful. And that twists and should free up this fan, I believe. And it's loose, but yet it's not loose. So I'm not sure what it's hanging on now. The fan is plugged in here. I'm going to unplug the fan just in case it jerks up on me and uh, jerks the wires. All three, all four of the little twisty plastic jobs are loose and they're lifted up. So I don't think that's holding it. There it is. I just have to pull on those. Okay, there it is. And that's what those are. They're just twist and expand. I'm basically going to rely on the putty that's already on here. And if I have to, I'll scrape it off of that one, put it on this one, and then stick the CPU in there. First thing I'm going to do is look at the CPU and see if it looks like it's even right before I open the box. 
This has been my biggest fear of the whole thing is there's so many variables when you try to do these kinds of upgrades. So you should really do your best research online. Check out your motherboard really carefully and check out the CPU really carefully and then read online reviews, etc. And that's what I did. So to my best guess, this is the right one. And we'll see if I guessed right. Maybe opening the package is the hardest part here. I'm trying to not tear it up in case it doesn't work. Maybe I can either return it or sell it or something. Oh, it came with the new pinchy parts itself. I didn't figure it would, but it did. But one of them is loose in the box. The rest of them are still in place. It looks like it's got its own sticky putty stuff built in, so that's a good thing. I'm not... Oh, this this actually broke off. No wonder. It's... Wouldn't you know? Right away, I get, a, I get the defective one. And it's broke off right here. Well, I may have to salvage the plastic part off of that one and put it on this one, but it looks like it's all glued in place, so I don't think I can do that. Well, that really is a bummer. I may have to figure out a way to fix that. I don't know. Maybe I can see a glue it. How, how can that be broken inside the box? <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. As soon as I opened the box, this fell right out. Well, I'm going to back up five, and I'll show you what I decide to do. These fins, I just noticed, are also bent right where they uh, broke this piece of plastic. So something, this almost had to be broke before they put it in the box, because the box isn't damaged. It really sucks. And then they had to throw that loose part in there separately. That just, just ain't right. It almost had to be broke, because that box is not damaged at all. Well, even though it's very disappointing, I'm just going to put the old fan back in. Actually, the old fan is rated higher uh, anyway, so to me, that's probably a good thing. I'll just use the old fan. Won't use the new one. Okay, so now looking at the chip, hopefully it's not damaged. It surprised me at this point. I've got to look close here now because uh, finding that problem, who knows what else I'll find. They actually had to damage that before they put it in the package. There's the way that was damaged. Just looking at the back of it here, inspecting it as close as I can, I don't see any problems. Don't see no scratches. Now it's very important that you put this in in the same orientation as the original. Some of these are fixed where you can't change it and some are not. Or at least that was my old experience. Probably have gotten around that now and they're probably all fixed where you can't screw it up. Yeah, this one's fixed with little uh, little pins so it, it you really can't mess it up. I loosened up this little cover here. It's just got a wire holding it down and based on what I'm seeing here this should just lift right out. Problem is how you get under it to lift it. That's my problem. And it almost came out with my fingers. There I got it. So there's the old one. The new one has the paste on it already which I didn't expect because the last time I did this that was not the case. It did not have the paste on it. Actually, the fan has the paste on it, I should say. All right, so I'm going to put this one in place. This is actually a very, very simple operation. Very, almost nothing to this. Put this back in place. Slide it in under this. There's a post right here that uh, these fins go under and then you push the little keeper down and slide it under and that holds it securely in place. So it's already in place. I'll put the fan back in the same orientation that it was in. The goop is still on here. Two of them are locked in and these other two for some reason are deciding not to lock in. Well, there they went. They, it felt like it locked in. Try it again. Yeah, that time they locked in, I think. Yeah, now it's not moving. Well, there's really nothing to it except for these goofy plastic things. And now that I got them figured out, the next one would be fairly easy. But um, it took me a little while to figure that one out because 
you can't see down in there to see what the problem is. You just have to feel what the problem is, and I think I've finally figured it out because it is perfectly solid now. It doesn't move at all. So that's the way it needs to be. It should be making good contact with it. So now we should be able to test this thing out to see if it's going to boot up. And that's always the trick whenever you put in some big component like this is the PC still going to boot up. We'll find out in just a moment. Here's the big moment. I have the monitor turned on, but I have not yet powered up the PC. So let's power it on and see if it actually works. And your guess is as good as mine. Well, it powered on for a second. It slowed down. It powered back up. Uh, that's not a good sign. But it is coming up. I'll be darn it. That, that's kind of scared me when it did that. It, that may be a normal function when you change a CPU. I don't know. Scared me though. New CPU installed. Please enter setup to configure your system. Okay, well, at least it's recognizing it. So we'll go through there. F1 to run setup. Now, I don't know what I'm doing when I run setup because I have never done this, at least not in the last 25 years. And back then they weren't this smart, trust me, when I did it. So we have a performance and energy saving deal. This is the optimal. This, this is normal middle I guess and this is power saving here if I wanted this so this is the normal this is the blazing speed optimal I'm tempted to go with that because we need it for our videos but usually there's a reason why they pick normal <laughs> so I'm not sure about that I I may have to do some research on that I'll probably just go with normal for right now I'm assuming that this chip will be better than the old one which was probably set on quote-unquote normal. The temperature at the moment looks okay. It's got a voltage there. Nothing's in the red, or so to speak. It's all, what I can tell, looks like blue to me. So I'm assuming it's blue. It's either blue or green. The boot priority. I don't want to change boot priority, I don't think. Be my luck that it'll change it for me, so maybe I should look at it. Oh, it looks like it did change it because it should boot on my SSD and it's got the first one picked so I'm going to pick the SSD I hope it's right and so for those of you who may not know SSD is your solid state drive and the SSD is where my operating system is located the, the solid state drive solid state means it has no moving parts it's all transistors and hardware there's no, nothing moving in there nothing mechanical and that makes it faster so definitely you want your operating system to boot off of your SSD. So I'm glad I did go in there because they had changed it, which is my typical luck. I wouldn't have known why it didn't work <laughs> if I hadn't gone in there. Well, it looks like it uh, brought the system up. Select this message to fix. It can't install updates. Now, I don't know what updates we're talking about. So let me see what that means. We found some issues. Select this message to fix and finish the updating. All right, well, we'll click on fix issues. We'll see what happens. And if I'm to believe it, I guess it fixed it because <laughs> it left. It looks like it's installing something. It's got status installing right here. And uh, as far as I can tell, it says 0% on installing. So it's either, there it goes, 7, 9, 12, 13, 16, 17. We're moving up in the world. This is making sure we're ready to install. This may take a few minutes. Now, I'm not sure why Windows updates would occur just because I changed the CPU, but more than likely, there is something in Windows 10 tied to the CPU. That wouldn't surprise me. Uninstall this app now because it isn't compatible with Windows 10. All right, I guess I'll click uninstall. I don't know why. Oracle VM Virtual Box. I just at a high level kind of know what Oracle is. I don't know the details. All right, I guess I'm just gonna follow its prompts. I'm just removing it because that's what it told me to do. And it's, it's checking other things now it looks like. Almost ready it says. We need to do a few more things before you can update. We'll let you know when we're done and what to do next. 
And up in the upper left, the status up here still says 40%. So it doesn't make for a real exciting video. If anything exciting happens, I'll fill you in. And then I'll show you the results here in a moment, I hope. As you can see, Windows is up and working. I have done some preliminary tests by starting my large video program here, and it starts, I can tell for sure, much quicker than it used to. Um, this used to take at least twice that long to get going, I would say. So it seems like that part's working much better. Um, just loading, here's a video I haven't loaded for quite a while, and it loaded really quickly as you can see and it's a fairly large video it's 20 minutes long not huge but and then uh, when I click this this usually takes a long time to um, show the sound waves and you can see how quickly that came up so I would say it's a success right now the real success will be as if it improves my uh, live shop talks and we won't know that till we do that test my friends, it's just a little follow-up. As you saw, I was disappointed that the leg had broken off of this fan. And now i got to find which one it is. It was this one here. It was broke off. And these fins were bent. I straightened the fins, and I reinforced both sides of this uh, leg with very thin ebony. <laughs> and so I glued it on there. And so this is working again. So I talked to uh, Intel, got a hold of a fellow by the name of Raymond, and Raymond was very, very, very helpful. He was one of the good guys. And he is sending me a new fan to replace this one. It was quite an ordeal because this is very old, actually. Even my new processor is very old. It's like 10 years old. And I, you know, I didn't know that exactly uh, when I ordered it. Uh, I knew this was an older PC, and I knew I'd be replacing it with older parts to fit the older PC. But uh, anyway, just to make a long story short, uh, apparently the upgrade is successful. Uh, apparently, it does speed up the PC some. And I upgraded it from an, from an i5 third generation to an i7 second generation. So I was going, hmm, is that really an upgrade? Well, he wasn't sure either, but when he, after he checked it out, he, he feels like I did do well. He said that um, I've upgraded the uh, threads from four to eight, I believe it was, and I've upgraded the PCI something, I forget what he called it now, PCI something from 8 to 16 by going to the i7. In hindsight, I wish I would have got the i7 3000 series, which would have been the third generation, which would have been more or less an equal upgrade from third generation 5 to third generation 7. But, you know, the reason I bought the second generation upgrade, just so you know, was that I had looked online and the tests indicated that the second generation Intel i7 was the fastest one and I wanted the speed. So far it seems like that worked. I'm a happy guy. I just wanted to give you that little addendum here so that you would know what I did, why I did it, and that even though I didn't really know what I was doing, it all turned out fairly well, and I'm happy so far. If this doesn't seem like it's doing the job, I could always get the third generation i7 and upgrade it again, but I think I'll just stick with this because, like I said, the tests indicate this was the fast one, and so far, that seems to be proving true. Hope you enjoyed this video and seeing me work on something other than a guitar. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.